Here I've got the Midi Cake R. It's a really fun little box that takes a unique approach to arpeggiating and sequencing. We've got four lanes of arpeggiators, as you can see here, and that means we've got four arpeggiators, but they all play notes based on the global settings we've got down here. So at any one time, they'll be playing notes from, say, a C minor, or a D major, or an E seventh, or a G sustained fourth. But you don't have to stick to the regular scales that we've got in here. You can program your own in whatever notes you like, really. Here's a little track I made using these sort of basically random notes, but they sounded good. It's probably a scale, if you know what you're talking about. But yeah, just use these as the basis for this demo. I'm playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. The original bit here is that each of the four channels can be programmed with all sorts of different parameters that we can see here, uh, all listed out underneath the LEDs. So think of a parameter that you can change on an ARP and then add some more that you've not seen before. You can see we've got steps, we've got direction, we've got this odd one, quite cool one actually called bounce. And these can all be modulated by modulator A and modulator B. If we're going to set there, modulation B over, over 32 bars which means we can create these patterns that never repeat themselves, different amount of steps, different times, different direction, different bounces, all sorts of stuff in there. And because we've got all this control over these parameters, we can, up to a point, use it like a basic, sort of really weird, interesting sequencer. So taking a quick look at that intro track, for example, if we go to track three, that's playing a chord, track one's playing an ARP, so on chord mode, it plays all the notes that are in that ARP all at the same time. We just listen to that on its own. If we come to the set, it's playing a seventh. If we hold the seventh, there are the notes it's playing on the Cobalt 5S, because that's the only polyphonic thing I've got on the table. On that EDM demo, the Cobalt is playing a pad, so it just plays the same notes all the way through. There's some modulation in the pad itself, but it's just playing the single chord. If you put it onto chord mode, we get a nice sort of gated chord effect. Or if you put it onto the art mode, it'll play the individual notes. But if we go back to the more ambient demo from the intro and take a look at the rhythm track on that, we can see we're only playing the first two steps of an eight step pattern. And looking at the other instruments, the Erebus is playing a semi-random pattern on channel four. I say semi-random because if we go into it, let's go to set, it's modulating, let's see what's modulating. Over 20, 20 bars is that, a 33% amount of octaves. So it's playing octaves high, octaves low, octaves in the middle. And that changes, as I say, over 20 bars. Mod B, so for every three quarters of a bar, it's changing the gate length, I think. And that's on a uh, sign, we can change that. But that's why it disappears every now and then. Because it's going so short. So it's never repeating itself, it's just giving nice little punches here and there. And then there's the Tega, and that's being played by channels one and two. And again, this is sort of semi-random. If we look at one, that's going up. Two, it's going up and down. Number of steps is eight on two. It's eight on one as well. And two is playing 332 beats per bar, whatever that really means. But you just play around and you find things that sound nice. So 
So overall, we get that sort of familiar repetitive loop because the cobalt's playing for the first two steps on every bar, but we get those nice non-repeating patterns on the Erebus and on the Tiger or the Tiger. And it's a nice effect, it's not something that I would have programmed manually myself. So you just experiment until you find something that you like, and I quite like that. Looking at the main parameters we've got to play with then, if we go into the set menu, we've got velocity, got gate, we all know what these things do. Changing the octave, note offset, so it starts on a different note, doesn't start on the root note. Time, lots of different options there. Number of steps, up to 16. Offset, so this is slightly different to the note offset because it'll start the arpeggiator on the next or the second or the third step of the arpeggiator itself. Direction, we know what they do. Delay, delays the actual notes themselves. This bounce parameter is really nice, it's got different ways of playing the scale. We're going up, we're just going to go normal. We can start bouncing around. And these work whatever direction you're working in. If we go down, bring the octave up to start with. So that's coming down, not up now, obviously. And there's user configurable ones as well. Let's go back to the main one, direction up. And we can jump steps. And once we go out of MIDI range, it'll just repeat the sort of the top note within that range and you can go in and you can change that range as well. And then we've got repeat. So everything on here is quite easy to understand, but it's just quite hard to get your head around at first how it all works. And hopefully this video is sort of throwing you in the deep end and giving you a really good overview of what it actually does. Rhythm, and these are like uh, little sort of, little sequences, and we can go in and we can edit these. So that's the velocity that we're looking at there. Increase the velocity, put it on zero. So almost like gating stuff, but you're just basically not playing all the steps. Now you can see that we've actually got one that's been tied. To tie it, we press up until we wanna go up one more. And then it's tied. There we go. And you've got 16 of them in there. Groove does the same thing, but it changes the timing of each of the notes. So. Little grooves, Let's put it back on zero. Effects is basically putting a sort of offset or a, a slight bit of randomization. If we go to the start, so amount of randomization, the parameter that you want to randomize. And then we've got these different seed patterns, seed being the initial value. And then obviously the randomization amount is the randomization away from that value. So every step's slightly different and then we can repeat that over 32 bars. Modulation, essentially an LFO of all these parameters, LFO amount, the parameter that you want to modulate, shape of the modulation curve, and the length, again, up to 32 bars, modulation A and modulation B, both the same. Then MIDI out, change the MIDI channel. That's probably the easiest thing to understand on this. Then in the main menu, we've got various options through there as well. We come out of the setup menu and play. We can now change the chords live. And we can also move the tracks and stuff. You've seen me doing that. If you press follow, one follows the next, so it'll play one, then it'll play two, 
then it'll play three, then it'll play four, which obviously if you've got something that's slightly more full of, um, of rhythms than this is, you'd hear it better, but you get the idea. It's playing all of one, finishes the bar in one, goes to two, which did decide not to play anything because of the way I've set it up, but you get the idea. Then we've got these macro knobs at the top, and these are good for sort of live performance. The setup initially for velocity, but click them. I don't know, let's put octave on there, so. Now changing the octave of one. Again, nice little performance tool. And on top of all that, you can go into the set mode while you're playing. And we can change what we want in there as well. This is still all playing. We can chain up to 32 bars, you can have 32 different chord changes and the like. If we go into here, let's just delete whatever's in there. So, um, G diminished, then another one, then let's go to the B. This is what I did in the intro track. Come out of that, I'm going to play that. Play in the G. X bar. And obviously I've played almost a couple of octaves too high. But you get the idea, we can go in and then we can edit all that as well. If we come back, we can see what we've picked. There's no song mode, and that's only 32 bars long, but it's a really handy little thing. And obviously if you're playing something really slow, that can evolve over a really long time, but we can also um, load different banks and patterns using MIDI as well. So you can link it to your door, that sort of adds a little bit more flexibility. And obviously you'll notice that the chord changes can only be on the start of the bar. So when I say it's like a sequencer, it's quite flexible. You know, it's not your standard sequencer. You play, you mess around and you, and you come up with different things. In fact, that intro track, or this track I've been playing here, I've offset the ambient drum sounds to come in on the half beat, so beat 0 0.5 rather than beat 0. Which is, <laughs> which is why it sounds like the chords are changing before the bar, you know. It's just the way you play around, mess around, come up with nice things. So as we're talking about sequences, as I say, you can sequence things up to a point. Let's go back to bank 16, 12. There we go. Still playing that pattern, so let's delete it. So we've got that little pattern playing, but we could, as we've done earlier, it's just play, say let's play the first two beats of that bar. So we go into the rhythm, set up rhythm. Uh, if we've got one that's playing the first two beats, whoops. Playing the first two beats of the bar, let's find one. Let's use this one, and let's edit it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's get that down to zero. And eight, down to zero. Okay, pattern length, eight. That's playing, is it, is it playing a minor, is it? Let's have a look. So if we wanted to play the C and then the G, for example, We'd go in to set it and we'd jump. I was already jumping two notes. 
jump on another note. Or we could change the note it starts on. So if we wanted to start on the G, we'd note offset by two. So that's one, two, three. So hopefully it's offset by two. Or we could go into the bounce and we could change what it's doing on this bounce. You know, there's loads of different ways of going in and actually deciding what it's going to play and when it's going to play it. And if you use the bounce just like that on that EDM track, I've sort of stipulated which notes in the scale to play. If we go to one of the others, for example. Actually, really quite nice. There's a little change in the track, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I want to go back and remake that now. But by setting out which note it's going to play and then how it's going to play them, you can really dig down deep and get the most out of the sequencer in it. If we wanted to play the first and the third, for example, back into the rhythm, and we'll edit that. Put that to zero, put the next one. Go to jump, no offset, play repeat, play the same note, go to the different bounces, just take the repeat off. You get the idea, so you can, in a way, go if you you know if you're messing around and you think I just want it to repeat those two notes on every bar or every other bar, you can go in and do that sort of thing. So you can tweak things when you've got them almost right. I use this for going in and going right. Actually, what I'd like is that not to change. Is it to play definitely those two notes, that sort of thing? But it just makes it incredibly flexible and more predictable than random when you need it to be. So what are its limitations? Obviously, it's not a door in a box. It's not meant to be. It's meant to make you approach things in a different way. And I think I've mentioned all the sort of real limitations I've come across that are just, not really limitations, it's just, it's just the way it works. So any note or chord changes can only come into effect at the start of the bar. The chord chaining is only 32 bars long. But as I say, you can select patterns via MIDI, so there's a bit of a work around there. And I have found it takes a while to land on something you like. You can be playing around for ages and get nothing, then all of a sudden it all just sort of springs into life. But it's an interesting way of doing stuff. The only thing I thought would be nice to have that sort of missed was the ability to maybe modulate other things on these, uh, on these synths. You can control all the things that you're controlling with these macro knobs via MIDI. You've got a MIDI learn down here, but it'd be nice to be able to send that MIDI as well. So one of these uh, LFOs, for example, to just gradually send it to a cutoff or something like that, so you get something, some nice fluid changes on the synths themselves. Say fluid, you know, stick a, a square on it or whatever. Just would be a nice little addition to it and I've no idea if it's possible or not. Only thing that I thought would be a nice little addition though. But all in all, a nice little unit. If you like experimenting, you like doing things a little bit out of the ordinary and you're not necessarily too keen on doing your sort of four by four banging EDM tracks, something more floaty perhaps, something a bit more experimental, something a bit more almost like self-generative, take a look at this. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. If it was, please do think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. It all helps to support the channel. I've got patches, I've got samples and bits and bobs over there as well. And I will see you next time.
Thank you.